Situated in the heart of the Rocky Mountains lies one of Colorado's most breathtaking roads. Stretching between the charming town of Crested Butte and the scenic community of Paonia, this pass is home to one of the single largest living organisms on the planet. Growing from a shared root system, every tree within an aspen forest is genetically identical. Imagine endless groves of these towering trees, their white bark gleaming like ghostly sentinels beneath a canopy that shimmers in the wind. During autumn, entire groves, which just days ago were a sea of green, transform into a rich tapestry of gold, amber, and fiery orange, creating one of the most iconic and photographed fall landscapes in the Rockies. This is all you need to know about leaf peeping on Kebler Pass. Hey, it's Ryan with Trails Off-Road. Today is the end of September and we decided to play hooky and go chase some Colorado fall colors. We're out on Kebler Pass near Crested Butte, which arguably has the largest aspen grove in the nation. If we're gonna find amazing, vibrant foliage, this has gotta be the place to do it. Come join us on our journey as we chase the changing aspens and show you everything that you need to know to do the same. Getting to any trail is easy with the Trails Off-Road app. Simply find your trail with a name or map search, select the trail, hit navigation options, directions to trail, and then select either the beginning or end of the trail depending on where you're coming from. You will then be redirected to either Apple or Google Maps, and voila, you're quickly be on your way to adventure. We started in Carbondale and headed for the west side of the pass, which takes around an hour to get to. There is no cell service once leaving Carbondale, so make sure you know where you are going and have your offline maps downloaded before it's too late. Kebler Pass is an easy, graded county road suitable for any vehicle. You are likely to see every kind of vehicle traveling this road, from passenger cars to RVs, and maybe even a box truck or two. You should expect the road to be busy with traffic, especially during the peak color change. This is a popular road and definitely not one of those hidden gems. From start to finish, Kebler Pass is extremely scenic and it's hard not to find an amazing view. From Marcellino and the Beckwith Mountains to Ruby Peak and Gunsight Pass, there is plenty to see along the drive while immersing yourself in the fall foliage. And this is a welcomed gift because the hard reality of leaf peeping is that not all leaves change at the same time. It's rare to see an entire mountainside all at peak change. So whether you are seeing green trees, yellow trees, or bare trees, a little variety in the scenery will keep the drive entertaining. Peak color change varies from year to year and greatly depends on weather conditions. But generally, leaves begin changing mid-September and peak near the end of the month or the first part of October. Now that you know when to visit and what you can drive, let's talk about where to stay along Kebler Pass. On the west side of the pass, along the banks of Anthracite Creek, Kebler Corner offers abundant accommodations from cabin rentals and full RV hookups to electric only and primitive tent sites. Here you can find a general store with just about anything you might need for a trip in the area. They have bathrooms and showers, a laundromat, and even guest Wi-Fi. The staff here is extremely welcoming and a great resource for local knowledge. Whether you need some snacks, drinks, fishing gear, or bug spray, be sure to stop in and see the friendly folks at Kebler Corner. A little farther down the road at Waypoint 24 is the Erickson Springs Campground, a Forest Service run campground with 18 sites that include pit toilets, picnic tables, and fire rings. There is also a picnic area here if you are looking for a nice stop.
Further up the road, you'll enter the Aspens and find another Forest Service campground at the scenic Lost Lake. Continuing along the west side of the pass, you will find numerous dispersed camping options suitable for any type of camp setup, whether you are in a tent, an RV, or anything in between. On the east side of the pass, outside of Crested Butte, camping is restricted to designated sites only. There is plenty of signage to notate where the camping is, so just look for signs. All of these sites have steel fire rings and a few will also have picnic tables, but not many. Some of these designated sites are clumped together in groups, while others are more spread out, giving you some space from your neighbors. Of course, there's always the option to just snag a hotel or a home rental in a nearby town as well. For our trip, we decided to return to the west side of the pass and pitch camp in a large aspen grove at waypoint 14. Yeah, we claim this spot. There are numerous sites here, several of which are good for groups, and you are rewarded with spectacular views of Ruby Peak and Mount Owens. The camping along Kebler Pass really is incredible, so it's no surprise it's a popular destination. If you are lucky enough to visit during a weekday like we were, you'll have a much easier time finding a great spot. Uh, Ryan, what you got over here, buddy? Sir. Well, it all depends on your, on your liking. First, we're gonna start with the hors d'oeuvres, which is the, my favorite, spinach artichoke dip. And some, Wisconsin uh, some, cheese. some crackers. Next up, you have your you're having salad. So that's your second course with your Caesar salad. Chicken, of course, on top of that. Then spaghetti and meat sauce. A little bit of applesauce on the side. And then we're gonna follow it up with dessert. Some sweet and salty kettle corn. Where do your green beans fit in? Oh, and green beans are, you know. That substitute to the other green. <laughs> so my wife don't yell at me. What do you got here, buddy? Some cold chicken soup because I'm too lazy <laughs> to heat it up. <laughs> what do you got? What's on the menu for you? Pork and potato hash from Sprouts. Dang. After a good night's rest, we got an early start the next morning and headed up to Lost Lake for some sunrise shots as we had heard the aspens were really starting to pop up there. We also wanted to do some hiking so this seemed like a really good area for that as well. Sunrise at this lake really is a place worth losing some sleep over. The Lost Lake area offers a wide range of activities like fishing and camping, but it is also a great choice for a hike. The Three Lakes Trail is a fairly easy two mile loop that takes you past waterfalls, stream crossings, and you guessed it, three lakes. You can pay the parking fee to start at the campground and Lost Lake Slough, or you can park for free at the Lost Lake Trailhead and add about a mile to the trip. Traveling counterclockwise, the hike up to Lost Lake is a gentle grade through thick forest with plenty of golden aspen trees. When we arrived at Lost Lake, we were pretty lucky as we had the entire place to ourselves and were greeted by a cow moose on the opposite side of the lake. John thought this luck might extend into his fishing endeavors, so he was pretty excited to get his fly rod tossed onto the water.
I'm sad to report we returned to the Jeeps without even the closest nibble of a bite, but we still had a really enjoyable morning and it was time to go explore even more of what this scenic road offers its users. There are a lot of other hikes to check out in the area and many lakes to visit as well. But one place that really caught our eye was a very unique pullout next to a giant fern field. Definitely not something you see that often, so it was pretty cool to walk through and experience. The thick golden colors about hip height reminded me of the movie Gladiator. While this ancient plant itself felt like being a dinosaur in Jurassic Park. It's one of those places that should seem easy to find from the edge of the road, but you might just miss it if you blink too long or take advantage of the road and drive too fast. It's pretty easy to see why this road garners so much attention, especially in the fall, with just tons of things to see and do. Whether you start or end your trip in the town of Crested Butte, make sure to take some time and walk around a bit. Historic Old Downtown is a great stop where you can tour the shops, check out a brewery, or grab a delicious bite to eat. Our personal favorites are the Eldo Brewery with a great Old West feeling and an awesome second story patio, and Secret Stash Pizza which always gets raving reviews for good reason. Kebler Pass is an absolutely stunning road with amazing scenery. It's everything we could have dreamed of for a fall color drive. From the looks of it, we're maybe a couple days before peak color change, but even with more green than we anticipated, the road was simply breathtaking around every turn. The vast number of recreational opportunities along this road make it enjoyable for everyone, and the close proximity to major towns is another plus. If you're looking for a fun Colorado drive in the fall, definitely add Kebler Pass to your list. And if you're looking for more fun drives for any occasion, check out Trails Off-Road on the web and in the app stores. We'll see you on the trail. <laughs> How cheesy did that look? <laughs>